Good morning. This is my attempt at recording our lecture for Wednesday. I uh, thank you for your patience through this process. I really appreciate your um, your patience and your well wishes and prayers. Uh, a quick update on me. I ended up having surgery on Sunday. Um, I was expecting to do that early this week, but had some complications over the weekend and so they sort of rushed that and did a, a surgery on Sunday and um, I'm back home and recovering now. I'm not sure how long I'm going to be out. It kind of depends on pain medications and how, how long I need to be taking those things. But I appreciate your flexibility and um, I, I do appreciate your, your prayers and your concerns for me as well. Today we're going to start on chapter six in your textbook. This is a chapter on population growth. I would encourage you to take a look at your textbook. Um, you bought it, so you might as well use it. And um, there is a lot of good material in there. We'll talk about it, but um, I don't intend for this to replace the need for you to, to read the chapter yourself as well. So please, uh, please do take a look at those chapters. A couple logistical things. Uh, last week I posted your homework for this chapter and originally had a due date of this Friday. However, um, given some of these issues and delays that have happened, I've decided to push that back. So that homework won't be due until Friday the 26th. That said, I wouldn't push it off um, to the last moment. Some of you have already completed the homework, which is great. But um, do, do take a look at the McGraw site. I'll, I will end up pushing that, that deadline back, but please uh, take a look at it and, and try to try to complete that. That'll help to, to reemphasize these concepts that we're talking about today. Today, we're gonna to be in chapter six. Uh, on Friday, we'll also continue with chapter six, which is all dealing with these concepts of population growth and population rates of change. I've enjoyed starting our lectures with a joke and doing this remotely, unfortunately, I cannot solicit a joke from you, so I'm gonna give it a shot. So with uh, this injury, the physicians told me that about 25% of my grip is lost. So when I heard that, I said, Wait. Today we're talking about population biology. Throughout this, course we hear a lot about some of the environmental issues that go hand in hand with a increasing human population. Um, today we're going to talk about that that some but also about increasing animal populations and rates of change in animal populations and some of the things that help keep that in check. So this image here is an image of an invasive type of fish. These are Asian carp in the Midwest, we have these in Missouri. These are fish that have been around for about 25 years or so, and their populations have just really exploded. They're an invasive species, meaning that they come from a different part of the world. And, and the parts of the world that they come from, they have natural predators and they have things that keep their population in check that we don't have here. And because we don't have those factors to keep those populations in check, these populations can really explode. And we have seen that happen here in the Midwest where many of our um, aquatic systems that connect to our large river basins have just tremendous populations of these fish. Um, these fish cause all sorts of, of challenges in the ecosystem. They're not native to our ecosystem, so they disrupt natural food chains and food webs. They're actually kind of dangerous. So in this image here, these are fish that are jumping out of the water. As a boat approaches, the vibrations from an outboard motor causes these fish to jump, and um, that can create a hazard for people as they're, as they're boating around. Some of you may have experienced some of these here in the Midwest and, and here in Missouri. This is an example of uh, population biology and some of the issues that we're gonna be talking about with population growth. 
An outline for our discussion today and Friday, we're going to be talking about dynamics of population growth. Dynamics are factors that affect change. We're going to talk a bit about some terminology and a little bit about mathematics there. Uh, but the area that I think is most important here are factors that regulate population growth and then how that relates to conservation biology and uh, ecological systems. So well, we'll start with a lot of terminology and some math. I really want you to, to keep that in mind that we're eventually leading to these factors that regulate population growth and the implications of that for conservation biology. We're going to start with some terminology and some terminology as it relates to mathematical characterization of population ecology and population growth. So the first term would be just population. What is a population? And a population is a total number of animals or members of a single species in a specific area in a specific time. So if we were to talk about a classroom of students as an example here, if we had a classroom of students and there are 50 students in that classroom, the class population of students would be 50. We use the term n for population. So n equals the population. So here, if we had our class population of 50 students, n would equal 50. And those um, notations of like n and r and t that we'll talk about here in a moment all become important as we develop these mathematical equations to help describe these processes. The second term would be rate. This is the rate of growth or the rate of population change. So the number of individuals which can be produced or removed from the population um, over a certain period of time. So if we took an example again of a classroom, let's say that we had a classroom of 50 students, um, that would give us a population of 50. So an N equals 50. And then if we looked next year and we had 55 students in that classroom, then we have 10% more. So our rate of growth is 10% over a one year time period. We often denote rate in terms of a multiplier. So we use a little r to describe that. In our situation, if we had a, a growth rate of 10%, r would be 1.1. So what that means, um, this r is the, the multiplier. So if we took 50, multiplied 50 times one, which would be no change at all, then we would have 50 again the next year. If we multiply 50 times 1.1, we come up with 55. So a growth rate of 10% is actually an R of 1.1. A growth rate that's steady is an R of 1.0. Hopefully that makes sense. Along with N and R, we have T that denotes time. So this is a unit of time on which our rate of growth is based. So in our student example, where we went from 50 students to 55 students, we're talking about a year's difference. So T or time in this situation is one year. So um, our example, um, and I realize I'm being redundant, but I really want to stress this. If we had 50 students, our population is 50 or n is 50. If the next year we have 55 students, then that's 10% um, more. So our rate of change is 10%. So our r is 1.1. So if we took 1.1 multiplied it by 50, we'd get 55. And the time period that we're talking about is one year. So t equals one year. I think these concepts are best understood with examples. So we're going to go through just a couple examples here. So um, we have a hypothetical population of Sasquatches or Bigfoots. So obviously this is a made up example. If we had 10 Sasquatches, our population would be 10 or N would be 10. If next year we had 11 Sasquatches, we went from 10 to 11, then that represents a 10% difference. So the rate of change is 10% per year. 
So given a 10% rate of change, our R would be 1.1 in this situation. And T is one year. Since we're talking about 10 Sasquatches one year, next year 11 Sasquatches. So T equals one year. So if we're going from 10 to 11, that is a growth rate or R of 1.1. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, then, then pause this for a moment and make sure that you understand this concept before moving on.